I, I mean, this sounds more like an insult than a compliment. <laughs> I, mean, don't, I mean no disrespect. I, I know you're sincere, and I, I know there's been preparation here. I don't mean to mock, but certain things are ridiculous, impossible, and the only reason people come up with this is because based on their faith, they have to find Muhammad in the Bible. Otherwise, it never occurred to you to do it because the Bible is so much not about him and so much about something else. The incontrovertible facts are that Muhammad is no more prophesied in the Bible than Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon church, is prophesied in the Quran. And in saying this, I, I mean no insult to my Muslim friends who are here who are watching this, but if your faith requires you to believe that the Bible prophesies about Muhammad, then you need to question your faith. I am finishing my opening statement with the Song of Songs which according to almost a consensus of Jewish scholars refers to the relationship between God and Israel and the church and Christ according to Christendom. Nearly every verse of chapter 5 either directly references or alludes to different biblical prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, some of which I have cited in this opening statement. Song of Solomon verse 7 confirms this during a period of exile. Verse 10 describes him as a standard bearer for an army of 10,000, confirming Deuteronomy 33. Verse 11 alludes to Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel 7, confirming he comes during the Roman exile and describes him, interestingly, as the purest Arabian gold. Verse 16 says, his mouth is most sweet, which is a description of the Quran that even the greatest enemies of the prophet, who are masters of the language, refer to it as sorcery, as it could not be the word of men. Moreover, this verse foreshadows the name of Prophet Muhammad and shows how he fulfills the description of his name. The Song of Solomon, um, listen, <laughs> I, mean no, I mean no disrespect. I, I know you're sincere, and I, I know there's been preparation here. I don't mean to mock, but certain things are ridiculous, impossible, and the only reason people come up with this is because based on their faith, they have to find Muhammad in the Bible. Otherwise, it never occurred to you to do it because the Bible is so much not about him and so much about something else. If you want to argue, is the Quran the, the Word of God, or the Bible the Word of God, or who is a better ethical teacher, Moses or Jesus, those are totally separate arguments. But the argument tonight is not even a debate. I'm only doing it out of respect for Muslims who believe it, but it's not even a debate to be candid. So when we, when we talk about this, actually, I think the Bible prophesies about me more than Muhammad. After all, my name occurs 15 times, Michael, Michael. The archangel. I, I mean, it's not even something that sounds like. I don't have to change the Hebrew as was actually done tonight. The Hebrew was changed to try to make it sound more like Muhammad because the, the Hebrew is Mahmadim, singular Mahmad, plural Mahmadim. In fact, the, the, the form Muhammad is impossible in Hebrew. It violates, there's no possible verbal form, not pu'al, hufal, no possible verbal form where that works, and there are no nominal forms where that works. So morphologically, phonetically, it doesn't work. It's, it's just not Hebrew. It, it's, it's a different language, a different name. It doesn't work, right? Just, just to be candid, just to be plain here. Uh, so a, as for this, if we want to try to argue, so Song of Solomon 516, uh, let, let's play it out as if it were Muhammad, okay? Uh, his mouth is delicious, and all of him is delightful. Mahmadin, such as my beloved, such as my darling, O maidens of Jerusalem. So substituting the name Muhammad for the Hebrew for, plural form Mahmadin, even though they're different in form and pronunciation, the first half of the verse would now read, his mouth is delicious, and all of him is multiple Muhammads. So the text is saying that the male lover is actually many Muhammads. The, the context has nothing to do with Islam. Nothing to do with Allah, nothing to do with Muhammad. And, and, and first and foremost, it is a love song, and then by application applied to God and Israel, or the church and Jesus. But it itself is a love song, speaking about Solomon and the lover. All right? And, and if you want to say that Mahmadin, the plural, is actually plural of Muhammad, Mahmad, well then let's see how Mahmad is used elsewhere. Something, it means something desired in the Hebrew Bible. Perhaps Muhammad is Ezekiel's wife, because it says that his wife is the Mahmad of his eyes. Or perhaps God said he was going to defile Muhammad, Ezekiel 24, 41, because he said, I'm going to defile that which is Mahmad in their eyes. You, you can't play word games like this without making the Bible into a complete mockery. Uh, and, and look, I, I don't mean insult in saying this, but the arguments are as weak as saying, I have a Christian friend named Mo, and he used to be very fat, but now he's slim. 
And you respond saying, he's not a Christian at all. No, he's Mo, who is now Slim. So Mo Slim equals Muslim. It, it's that <laughs> outlandish. Now contrast this with the fact that Yehoshua, Jesus, right? Yehoshua, Joshua, the high priest in Zechariah 6, is set forth as a type and symbol of the Messiah. All right, a priestly king. And what is Yehoshua also called in the Hebrew Bible? 27 times the, the name occurs, but many times we referenced him. Yeshua, the actual name is, occur, is, is found, and it's for the one who is a type and shadow of the priestly king. 